I love comic books. Now, comic books are more than just books. They're portals to these vivid and action-packed worlds filled with crime-fighting heroes, people we've all looked up to in some point of our lives. Now, I've only been a fan of comics for a couple of years, and I still have a lot to learn. However, the quickest thing I picked up on as a female comic book reader is that this is still very much considered a man's thing. And I have to admit, I was pretty intimidated. It was clear that these comics were created for the stereotypical straight white male audience in mind. Superman and Batman are buff and masculine, establishing their dominance and enforcing gender roles. While heroines like Wonder Woman are seen more as eye candy than superheroes, saving the world half naked with hardly any armor to protect them. <laughs> But most of all, I found a lack of minority women. And as it turns out, these vibrant worlds aren't so vibrant after all. For an industry built on fantasy and justice, it seems as if these two things are for the majority, then the minorities who have to deal with oppression from our society. And as a minority woman who struggles to find her identity in a whitewashed society, I found myself disappointed. Because if minorities can find acceptance in the real world or fantasy worlds, then where do we belong? And eventually, I couldn't help but ask myself, why? Why is it so hard to find heroines that are not over-sexualized and can still save the day? Why is it so hard to find more heroines with multiple degrees and are considered incredible characters, not by the size of their breasts, but of their minds? And finally, why is a group of minority women with their own comic book series so hard to find? So let's look at the big picture. In the grand scheme of things, why should this matter? Now, I want you all to see where I'm coming from, because I don't think most of us understand how big of an influence the comic book industry has in our society. These books have led to multi-billion dollar franchises, leading to merchandise that we not only buy for ourselves, but for our kids as well. These characters have grown into massive pop culture beings, whose influence extends further than the regular at your local comic book store. And with DC and Marvel releasing more television programs and films than ever before, we really need to take a step back and see how these images are benefiting our society. Our kids look up to these heroes, and they become the first figures they look up to. How we depict superheroes in the media is crucial to how they see themselves and the world around them. Do we really want our kids to grow up to superheroes that are too sexy and non-diverse? But most of all, do we really want girls from minority backgrounds to feel like they don't even belong in fantasy universes? By the end of my junior year at Louisiana State University, I started to think about what I wanted to do after college. I knew I wanted to do something great and be a voice for women who are just like me. Soon enough, I decided that my calling was to create comic books. Before creating my first comic, I decided to really dive into this industry and see if there were readers who felt the same way I did. In the midst of this voyage, I discovered something promising. Our society is experiencing a shift, a shift where we're waking up and realizing that the constructs in our society don't always have to be this way. We are waking up and demanding change, and advocating for a fair representation of all races, sexes, and genders. These actions have led to Marvel to create more content with more readers in mind. An example of this would be their newest series, Miss Marvel, starring Kamala Khan, a Muslim teenager growing up in Jersey City. As a woman with a Turkish heritage, I was proud to discover that it related to Kamala and her experiences. Within the first chapter of the book, I found myself crying as Kamala wonders to herself why she isn't pretty. Why couldn't she be born with blonde hair and blue eyes? Khan's rendition of how much damage a whitewashed society could do to minority women everywhere made me go back to when I was a little girl in third grade, who would pray to God every night that she would wake up white. After this, I wanted to see if there were comics outside the DC and Marvel universe, and if they were more progressive than the mainstream market. I then discovered creators like Kelly Sue DeConnick of Bitch Planet and Brian Von Saga who create comics that are filled with female characters that are diverse and strong, yet free from the expectation to be sexualized in order to obtain the reader's attention. These characters rebel against the patriarchy and are told from a point of view that is needed more in mainstream comics. It was at this point where I aspired to make comics like these. So picture this. Follow me to a galaxy far, far away. Here you have two planets, Zygron and Sakra, and they're on the brink of war. 
The people of Zygon have been enslaved by soccer for a, for a millennium. However, hidden within the depths of Zygon is a rebel army who have been planning for the chance to break free. So who are the leaders of this rebel army? The Glitz Squad. Five women who are leaders of their own designated military sector. So how does Glitz Squad meet my goal of being an overall feminist comic book? Well, first, it passed the Bechdel test. More than two women who talk about things other than men. Second, the women of Glitz Squad are highly educated in their fields. In fact, they risked their lives to receive the education that they did. Third, not only are these women diverse in terms of race, but also in sexuality. And finally, even though the actions in this plot are driven by strong, powerful women, no race, gender, or sex is inferior or represented as such. Glitz Squad is currently in production, and with an anticipated 2017 release, I hope that my comic really changes how minorities are represented in the industry. And I hope that minority women everywhere read my comic and relate to the Glitz Squad. But this comic isn't just for minorities. I hope everyone reads this. Because feminism isn't just a women's issue, it's a people issue. And the more people we have putting on a united front for comics like Glitz Squad or Bitch Planet, the more likely our influence will reach DC and Marvel and influence them to make more content and more readers in mind. But let's not stop there. Let's go behind the scenes. Because right now in DC and Marvel, men outnumber women nine to one in terms of employees and women only make up 15% of colorists. Not only do we need minority members in the content, we need them creating it. In order to get this industry to change it so desperately needs, we must make our voices heard to those of the biggest influence. But not only that, encourage others from all backgrounds and preferences to create this content so we can have this much needed perspective. And who knows, you might just inspire the next Stan Lee because everyone is capable of being a hero, and it's about time we prove it. Thank you.